Hi, this is Babak. In this video, I'm going to talk about a proof method for statements regarding natural numbers, like mathematical induction. If you remember, the validity of mathematical induction as a proof method relies on the well-ordering principle of the set of natural numbers n. This is the same for this proof method, which is called proof by minimum counterexample. Let me just refresh your memory about the assertion of the well-ordering principle. Every non-empty subset of n, the set of natural numbers, contains a minimum. So it means that if a is a subset of the, uh, the set of natural numbers on the one hand, and on the other hand it is not equal to zero, then this is guaranteed by this principle that this a contains a minimum element. And of course, you know that a minimum element of a set is always unique. Okay, uh, let me describe this method by solving two examples for you. If you remember when you were studying mathematical induction, there is a high chance that the first example that you uh, encountered with was to prove this equality. We want to s prove that the sum of the natural numbers from n, 1 up to n is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Now I want to use this method of proof, minimum counterexample, to show uh, uh, to, to prove this the same problem. Okay, so the idea is this. Let me start. I would say let A be the set consisting of all natural numbers little n such that they violate this equality actually. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is not equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And then we want to show, so we define a set violating this rule, containing elements violating this rule, and then I want to show that this set is actually the empty set. We show that A is equal to the empty set. Assume that this is not the case. This is not the case. And A is not empty. Okay, so you say that A is not empty on the one hand. On the other hand, we know that A is a subset of N because A is defined in this way. It contains all those elements coming from the set of natural numbers such that we have an extra condition. So definitely this set defined in this way is a subset of N. So then, according to the well-ordering principle, so well-ordering Uh, principle, I can conclude that a, a has a minimum. Minimum. Okay, now let M be the minimum of A. Okay, so I am calling this minimum M. When we say that M is the minimum of A, it means that M belongs to A, actually. So it means that, of course, M belongs to N, which is trivial. But we know also that it should satisfy the condition of the set. So it means that this M should also violate this condition. Okay, so this means that uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to M is not equal to m times m plus 1 divided by 2. Okay? So we know this. So let me put this in a box. We need it uh, for the next part. Okay. Now, I want to show that m is definitely greater than 1. How can I show that? By showing that actually 1 satisfies this equality. When n equal to 1 satisfies this equality, it means that it does not violate this equality. So it is not possible for that num 1 to be inside here because I am just collecting all numbers which are violating this. Okay, So I would say that since 1 is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2, uh, therefore... 
1 does not belong to a. Yes. So when a does not 1 does not belong to a, it means that so 1 does not belong to a and m is the minimum value for a. So this means that definitely the m value is greater than 1. Uh, so this means that there exists a k in the set of natural numbers such that m can be written as k plus 1. Yes? And of course, when m is equal to k plus 1, it means that k is less than, strictly less than n. So let me write this actually. So hence, k is strictly smaller than m. Then I will have the same story. k is smaller than m, m is the minimum of a. So what I can conclude is that k does not belong to a. Yes, because m is the minimum value and k is smaller than m. When k does not belong to m to a, it means that either it should violate this, which it cannot because k belongs to n, so it means that it should violate this rule. But violating this rule means satisfying this rule. So then it means that 1 plus 2, 3 up to k is actually k times k plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so we know that about this value for k, uh, this k value. And then let me give a star here. And then now I want to start from the left-hand side of this star. So the left-hand side of this star is the numbers, uh, the sum of the numbers from 1 up to m. But of course it is clear that if I do it step by step, I will reach to step m minus 1 and then after that I will reach to m. This is what I have on the left-hand side of this star relation. But now I know something else. I know that m is equal to k plus 1, so instead of m I put k plus 1, this 1 and 1 are cancelled, instead of this m I put k plus 1. So then it becomes 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to uh, k, and then I have k plus 1, okay? And let me write them in a pair of brackets. Then I know that from 1 up to k is equal to this expression, so this becomes equal to k, k plus 1 divided by 2, and then I have k plus 1. Now I can take the common denominator, so it becomes k, k plus 1 over 2, so let me write it this way, over 2 plus 2 times k plus 1, and then I factor k plus 1 out, what is left for me is k plus 2 over 2. Okay, then what? You see that k plus 1 is actually equal to m, so instead of this I put m, but this is one unit more, so it becomes m plus 1. So this is nothing except m times m plus 1 divided by 2. And that is exactly equal to the right-hand side of this star. And that is my contradiction, yes? Because on the one hand, based on a star, I have to admit that the sum of these numbers is not equal to m times m plus 1 divided by 2. On the other hand, I have to admit simultaneously that this sum is actually equal to m times m plus 1 divided by 2. So that's a contradiction, yes? And this contradiction arises because I'm assuming that a is not empty. So this means that a has to be empty. When a is empty, it means that I cannot find any number that violates this equality. So this means that this equality is valid for all choices of natural numbers n. So that is the idea behind the uh, proof by the counter minimum counterexample. Okay. Uh, now let us go and solve uh, another example. Example 2. Use the proof by minimum counterexample to show that for every natural number n, 6 divides n to the 3 minus n. Okay, so the idea is again as before. So I would say, I would say let a it be equal to the set of all natural numbers such that they violate this de desired property. They violate this, it means that 6 does not divide this. Again, we show that a is empty. 
sorry, if A is empty, the empty set. If not, what happens? If not A is not empty and A is a subset of N, again well ordering principle tells me that A has a minimum. Okay, now let me call the minimum, so let M be the minimum of A. Okay, when you say M is the minimum of A, it means that this belongs to your set, so this means that M belongs to the set A, so it means that 6 does not uh, divide M to the 3 minus M. So this is what we know, yes, because M is inside the set, should it, it should obey the rules of my set. Okay, but now I want to show that M is greater than or equal to 3 by checking N equal to 1 and N equal to 2 manually by hand, okay? I would say that since 6 divides 1 to the 3 minus 1, why is that the case? 1 to the 3 minus 1 is 0 and 6 divides 0. That's a true statement. So this implies that 1 does not belong to my set. Yes? Because it doesn't satisfy this needed condition for A, for the set A. And then we also know that 6 divides 2 to the 3 minus 2. Yes? Because 2 to the 3 is 8 minus 2 is 6 and 6 is divisible by 6. So this means that 2 does not belong to a either. And then I know that M is the minimum of A, so it means that M should be greater than or equal to 3, and of course a natural number. So when M is greater than or equal to 3, you can conclude that there exists a K in the set of integers so that M is equal to K plus 2. Yes? Okay, then what does it mean? It means that, def so this means that K is definitely smaller, strictly smaller than M. Now I would say that K is strictly smaller than M on the one hand, on the other hand, M is the minimum of my set, so this means that K does not belong to the set A. But I already know that K is, an, is a natural number, so you see, K is a natural number, so it satisfies the first condition to be natural. So the reason that K is not in my set is because it will violate this rule for my set. Violating this rule means obeying this rule. So this means that 6 divides K to the 3 minus K. Okay, this we know. And then, uh, uh, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that there exists a Q in the set of uh, integers so that K to the 3 minus K is 6 times that Q. That's the translation of 6 dividing K to the 3 minus K. Now again, as before, let me go to this uh, M to the 3 minus M and let's see what can we do there. So, M to the 3 now we have m to the 3 minus m is equal to. Instead of m, I can write k plus 2. So it becomes k plus 2 to the 3 minus k plus 2 instead of m, yes? And then I expand that uh, pair of brackets. It becomes the first one to the 3, 3 times the first one to the 2 times the second one. Uh, so let me see, 3k squared times, it is 6k squared. And then 3 times the first 1 times the second 1 to the 2, it becomes uh, 12k. And then finally plus 8. And if I multiply that negative sign in, it becomes negative k, negative 2. But now I want to have this combination. So this motivates me to take these two together. So this becomes equal to k to the 3 minus k. I put them in a pair of brackets. And then you see that I have, uh, I have this expression this expression, and then this one and that one become 6, yes? 8 minus 2 is 6. So then you see that I have a factor of 6 here, here, and here, so I factor a 6 out. Uh, let me change my color. So this becomes 6 uh, k squared plus 2k minus, oh no, plus 1. 
Yeah, is that right? Yes, I factored the 6 out, so it's k squared plus 2k plus 1. Okay, but uh, this one is a multiple of 6, so I will call it this is 6q, yes? Instead of this expression, I just put 6q. And then I have 6, uh, you can write that one, of course, k plus 1 squared. But then the important point is that you factor a 6 out, then it becomes q plus k plus 1 to the 2. Yes, but what is important is that this number is again a number from the set of uh, integers. It's an integer number because q is an integer and then k plus 1 is to the power of 2 is an integer. So if I add them, it becomes an integer. So what I realize, I realize this number is equal to 6 times an, an integer. So this, therefore, we have to admit... 6 divides that expression m to the 3 minus m. Yes? But that's a contradiction. Why? Because on the one hand, I have to admit that this is the case. m to the 3 minus m is not divisible by 6. Simultaneously, I have to admit as well that m to the 3 minus m is divisible by 6. And that is the contradiction. This contradiction arises from the fact that I'm assuming that a is not the empty set. Being A not being the empty set actually lets me to use the uh, let me use the principle uh, well ordering principle which in turn gave rise to the existence of the minimum value m and then I see that that uh, minimum value is actually making trouble for me because there is something contradictory about that minimum. On the one hand, this should be the case. On the other hand, this should be the case. So therefore, uh, A is empty. When A is empty, it means that this n there is nothing that can violate this relation. So it means that this should be the case. Okay, I hope that the video has been useful for you. I will put the link uh, to the PDF file of these notes below this video in the descriptions. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye.